time to remove the toothpicks. Alright, so I've got a little razor blade here. It's got a angled tip under it. I don't know if I bent that or it was already bent. I think it was already bent. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and kind of trim these things off a little bit. There you go. Get the glue. Sharpen that blade a little bit. <laughs> so, how you guys been? I've been doing pretty damn good. Enjoying the weather, even though it's kind of shitty outside, but it's alright. Been having some storms come through here. Some real good storms. Now you want to make sure you get all the this glue off, the extra glue that you could possibly get off of here because you don't want your bridge to be sitting on an angle. These nice and flat. So the wire going to the bridge, I do something with these. I don't like leaving them just flat like that because you don't really know if they're making good connection or not. So I'll put a little bit of a twist in the wire itself to where it overlaps on top of itself. And that kind of gives me a little bit of an assurance knowing that it's going to be touching the back of that bridge because it's sticking up just a tiny bit higher than what it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bridge back on. Everything should line up with no problems. These two screws were okay. The ones that were in the back were the ones that were pretty fucked up. Let's see here. Alright, so that's not bad. Find center of the screw where the screw's gonna go. should be wearing my glasses, right? Somebody stole my glasses. Yeah. Oh, that's better. I can see now. So I usually I hold the drill bit on a little bit of an angle to the hole, and by the time I straighten this out, I'm center. So I'm going to get them started with the drill bit, or start this way. Tighten the rest of it by hand. Let's 
so I could put in a little bit more. Oh yeah, much better, much better than what it was. So I've worked on a lot of guitars. I've worked on quite a few basses. And I've never came up against anything that was so much like this, which I kind of like a challenge. I could send it back and say, hey, send me another one. Something's wrong with this. Can't get it to set up properly. Um, you know, something's going on here. But like I said, I like a challenge. So what I ended up doing with this is I went and picked up a new set of strings. I picked up a set of Ernie Balls. Uh, I believe they're just... Uh, uh, regular slinkies and started to basically do my setup what I felt that the string action height should be as far as a bass goes uh, couldn't set it up that way so I looked in Ibanez's manual and tried to set it up the way Ibanez recommends setting it up couldn't do that either I was having a lot of uh, fret buzz and a lot of fretting out down the bottom, you know, most of the neck, half the neck, even with the relief that I put in the neck, which is a 12,000. So that's pretty much what Ibanez recommends as well. Still couldn't get this thing playable. So I was looking at it, looking at it, looking at it, and took my feeler gauge and I was able to put the feeler gauge behind the neck. It's like, okay, well, maybe that's a problem. The neck is loose. There's an issue with it so I took the screwdriver and kind of like tweaked it a little bit and the neck wasn't loose so I decided to take the neck off and I found a piece of sandpaper that was like as you can see in the picture and the indentation in the wood right in the middle of the neck screws that I've never seen before so that means that I could teeter-totter that neck one way or the other by loosening the bottom screws and tightening the top screws. I've never seen that before. I've seen a shim at the top. I've seen a shim at the bottom. But I've never seen a shim in the center. So to me, that's not right. All right. And to be honest with you, the action height uh, with the shim where it was, the bridge was set pretty high. All right. I removed the shim, put the neck back on. Now I've got a, as you can see here, they're pretty low. And I was still unable to get this thing to stop fretting out and buzzing and uh, having issues where it just, you know, I had no note when I would pluck it at the bottom of the string, at the bottom of the fretboard. So I was looking at this and it's like, well, you know, it really shouldn't have a shim in the center. What there should be is a shim at the bottom. And what I ended up doing is I traced out a piece of, this is a piece of maple. I traced it out onto the bottom of the neck. Now, you wanna make sure if you have an angled neck like this, you don't wanna put a shim going across the bottom because that's gonna tilt your neck a little bit on an angle. You don't want that. So you want to have something that is going to fill in the area and still be straight. Now I can cut this back a little bit, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to redo this and just put this back together and redo the setup on this and see how this works out with the shim where it should be instead of having a shim in the center. That's just weird. I've never seen that before. And all the guitars that I, I've taken off the necks, I found uh, a piece of wood. I found, but the shims were located where they were supposed to be. And some guitars that had a shim in them didn't need them. After removing the shim and putting the neck back on, I was able to set the guitar up with no problems. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and leave this shim in place. And I'm going to go ahead and put the neck back on the guitar.
with the shim at the bottom of the neck what I want to do is I want to start the screws at the bottom not snugging them up but getting them to where they're not loose either just like that and then we'll go ahead and put the top screws in because if I tighten up the bottom and I leave the top loose it's going to put too much pressure in the pocket and maybe not really give me the full function of that shim that I put in. So what I want to do is I want to tighten up the top ones pretty snug, not over tightening them. tighten up the bottom ones. That way it's not pulling one direction more than another and I get that shim to do its job. Alright, so let's get the strings back on this thing. You see I put a capo on there to hold the strings. These magnets are really strong on these, uh, these pickups. Go ahead and pull that in and pop it in place. Put some tension on it. Make sure that the string does not pop out of does not pop out of the tuner. Which I gotta say, these tuners are really nice. This bridge is really nice. the seats of the settles. Now until I get the full tension of the strings on the neck, this thing is going to be sitting on top of the fretboard, these strings. Like I said, I could send this thing back, but I like a challenge. Alright, so let's get this thing tuned up to pitch, and I can go from there. I know the neck is set proper, but I'm going to check that again anyways. Check again. Not that far off. All 
All right. So right now the action height is pretty low, and I'm probably gonna get some buzzing and shit. Yeah. So now that the strings are on, check the neck. Got a twelve thousand shim here. And I'm still good as far as clearing the way that I want it to be. Now, for the action height on this thing, I want to see either a no higher than a 664 on this low B string. All right, that's it. I don't want to be any higher. The next string would be like a 564 that's usually what I set it up for as far as a uh, uh, four string bass as I'll have uh, 564s or maybe even 464s on that E string. So everybody's seated in it slots the way it's supposed to be. So let me go ahead and get this action height set up over here. And they recommend on the 64s. On the 14th fret, let's see 12, 13, 14, yeah. So I'm using my ruler for this because my gauges don't have the setting that I need. Now I know my all my saddles are even with each other, they're not twisted at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them a complete turn on each side until I see. Six sixty fourths on that low B string. And I'm right there. So I'll go ahead and put that in tune because I know it's tightened up a little bit. Yeah. So look at that. A lot better than what it was because I was getting from like here down was frightened out buzzing and everything else that is a lot better so on the high E string or G string sorry I'm going to set this at two mils Not quite there yet. Well, I'm at one seventy five right now. Let's see what one seventy five, if that's going to buzz or not. Okay, 175 it is, that's where I'm leaving that. So the radius of this neck is a 12. So what I'm gonna do with this now is I'm gonna put this at the end. I should be muting that a little bit and muting that. And these guys are still kind of humming away. So I'm gonna take this and set set this to where I start hearing the string buzzing off of the radius gauge it's one full turn one full turn half turn 
half turn, half turn, half turn. Oh, right there, quarter of a turn. That's what I want to hear. Go to the next string. Full turn, full turn, full turn, full turn, bingo, next string, full turn, full turn, full turn, Full turn. Half of a turn. Half of a turn. That's what I want right there. So I want to make sure, looking at the bridge, that these guys are still pretty much right here and I can see that this one here is a little bit higher on one side now that raised me up quite a bit off of the uh, off the bridge plate make sure that one is still alright so I gotta tweak this one a little bit there you go all right so I should still see what I want to see here give me the I'm on 32 so what the hell all right All right. Get her tuned. That's a lot better. That is a lot better than what it was before. I couldn't get it to set up before. That shim was either in the wrong spot that they put in there. Without a shim, I almost decked the low, uh, the low B and the G string. I almost decked it to the body or the, the plate. Uh, now I want to do is check Which a nice thing about this base here, too is your saddles are also adjustable for the strings to go left and right So you can line them up over your pickup a lot better than where they're supposed to be And you want to come up with a happy media because you don't want to have too much of the string hanging over one side of the neck 
and not enough on the other so this is going to have to go in let's see that's going to have to go in just a little bit not much and then I can measure out what the string spacing is supposed to be on this and even it up all the way down. So let's get to that. All right, so it's been about 24 hours. Let's see if anything has changed with the neck, action height, or anything else with this base. So I'm going to go ahead and put the capo, the first fret, and check to see what kind of a gap here I have. It looks like I got a little bit more. No. No, it looks like it's fine. Alright, so that worked out pretty good. I can go ahead and close uh, the little trap door over here. Close that up. There's some other one. I can use the Allen key to push this door shut. There you go. Let's check to see what the action height is. good there and let's see if tuning has changed any I'm right on right on it's a little bit off tighten it up a little bit more that could be tightened a little bit more that could be tightened just a hair Maybe a little bit more in the hair. There you go. All right, so that's good. So string spacing on this thing, before I set the intonation, I'm going to go ahead and check that out. So like I said on this base, you can adjust the string spacing on this thing here. Now, I've already lined up the two outsides. If you take a ruler and you measure at the nut, you should see an eighth of an inch on the first between the first fret the side of the fretboard and the string so if you measure right here at the first fret, or you can even go to the edge of the fretboard so it just doesn't matter you should see an eighth of an inch on both sides and that's what I got on both sides here is an eighth of an inch so I can go ahead and measure out the spacing between all the strings and use So I'm looking at, uh, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, five eighths, yep, five eighths, about five eighths. This one here looks like it could be moved, yeah, this one here looks like it could be moved over a little bit. So let's see, where is that small Allen key? Loosened up. Got to hold that in place when you tighten it up because it will move on you especially under string tension don't over tighten it because you will strip out those screws so let's go ahead and check that again good now since I kind of stretched that a little bit should be a little bit off yep I am all right so let's check out the intonation are those Allen keys or is it a regular screwdriver it's a regular screwdriver not a big deal
on the harmonic it's right on and it's damn near close when fretted so I'm going to change that just a little bit so I go forward saying I go backwards a little bit with it and I'm pretty much right on it like floating right in the center I'm not going to bother with it so I got just a little bit more so I go forward a little bit right on good check the low harmonics good <laughs> not too bad so this is pretty much done exception of the pickup height so I'm gonna get into that right All now. Alright so I got my tools for adjusting or measuring the pickup height and we are like right on top of them. Shit. Oh I need the other screwdriver. Can't use a large screwdriver. So I'm just gonna go down a little bit. Down a little bit more. too damn close well after readjusting the action height on this getting it to where it should be okay, that's good now I gotta go down a little bit more yeah, that's good after adjusting the action height to where it should be on this thing Everything's going to change. That's got to go down. That's good. That's got to go down. down a little bit more. Good. Check the other side because when you adjust one side, it does change the pit uh, angle of the other side. See, now I can raise that back up again. Just a little bit. That's good. I'm not going to mess with that. That's It's touching the string, but it's not on the string. So I'm good. All right, so this thing is pretty much done. I don't have to do nothing more to it besides uh, throwing a little bit of wax, which I did, and I'm wiping it off now. 
This was bought new so there's no scratches or anything else that has to be repaired or polished or buffed out or anything. It's pretty much nice as is. So let me put my two cents into things over here. And I don't know, some of you guys would probably argue with me or, or probably say, you know, I'm wrong or, you know, something. All right. When I buy used, I go to eBay. I'm expected to pay a certain amount of money for a used item and I'll make that decision if that item is worth that type of money or not, depending on the photos, description, um, whatever I see physically in the photos that may be a cosmetic thing or a uh, description, maybe a mechanical or electrical thing. Um, and I'll determine if I'll buy I'll buy it or not, if it's worth it to me. I'll look to see what the used prices are of that item in, you know, not tip-top condition, but good condition. And I'll make the comparison with that seller's price and the price that I found used in good condition. If it's a good deal, then I'll grab it. If it needs a little bit of work and the price is right, I'll grab it. Not a big deal. When I buy new, I go to, most of the time I go to Z-Zones. Never had a problem with them. Uh, I had, I think, two guitars that I purchased from them that had crack in the uh, neck by the headstock, which could be a finish crack because the weather was kind of shitty. It was kind of cold when uh, I made those purchases on those, those guitars. I think one of them was the White Lightning, and the other one was, I can't remember what the other one was. But I sent them back. You know, you get a hold of them, take a photo of it, tell them what's going on. They're pretty good about saying, okay, well, you know, we'll send you an email with the a new shipping label, you know, box it up, ship it back to us, and you know, we'll take care of it. Never had an issue with them. As soon as they got the tracking number that this the other guitar was going back to them, I got a notification saying that they're shipping one to me. So it's kind of a race of which one gets where first. Now they didn't have this base in stock. So what I did is I went through Sweetwater. Okay. And I've never had a problem with Sweetwater. I've ordered some stuff. I don't think I've ever ordered a guitar from them, but I think I've ordered other stuff from them and uh, never had an issue with it. In this case, um, being a brand new bass guitar, there really shouldn't be any issues, at least one would think, right? Considering Sweetwater has a whatever point inspection that they do on their instruments. Now, is that for used instruments only? Because if that's the case, then I could see this kind of being, you know, put on a shelf from the factory, sitting in the warehouse for a little bit until somebody orders it from whatever place they're ordering from. Um, but if that's not the case, then this thing here should have went through their whatever point inspection and been corrected. Okay. Action height way too freaking high on this thing way too high uh unplayable high all right me as being you know somewhat of i still consider myself a, a beginner guitar player you know i have been, i've been working on them more than i've been playing them and i'm hopefully that would change but to get something like this out of the box and have that it would be a struggle for anybody who's a beginner guitar player that wanted to learn, or even if it was somebody who was a professional guitar player or bass player in this case, um, and then they go to try to set it up themselves. Or if they don't have the knowledge to do so, they're going to have to pay somebody else to set it up for them. And then that person is going to be looking at this like, what the fuck, right? Now, a lot of guitars have been in my hands, out of my hands, back to the people that own them, or sold okay i've never came across anything like this before this is a first to see a shim in the center of the neck pocket you know that's kind of odd as far as i i consider that being odd i've never seen that before usually it's either at the top if they want to pitch it forward a little bit or at the bottom if they kind of want to pitch it back a little bit that makes sense to me but to put it in the center all right if you're trying to raise the neck up out of the pocket, then you should have put a shim in the whole pocket area, not just in the center. Now you're using the screws that hold the neck in place to teeter-totter that neck in position. 
and you really can't like lock that neck down uh you know wood kind of bends a little bit it gives a little bit so you're going to end up having some issues maybe tuning issues you know would be the biggest problem now this was a joke all right this should not have been this way if sweetwater does an inspection on their guitars before they get shipped out this would have been something that would have been fixed from Sweetwater before I received it. Thanks, Sweetwater. But anyways, it's good now. I can start making some videos with it. We got a couple of songs that require a five-string bass that I've been looking at, and uh, so I'm going to start practicing a little bit. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to my two cents about uh, you know purchasing and. Uh, yeah, take it easy, have a good one, and I will catch up with everyone later on.